is NDTV and you are watching NDTV Prime. Salarpuria Sattva, Trust, It's What We Build, presents The Realty Debate with Manisha Natarajan. Just about every report since November 8th this year has declared that demonetization will bring down property prices in India. And the figures range from 10% to as much as 30%. Add to that the latest report by Prop Equity, a real estate research firm which has declared post demonetization Indian real devaluation of 8 lakh crore rupees will be wiped off. And you can perhaps see why a buyer who was ready to buy after a long wait has now also decided to step back and stay clear of any decision right now. In general, I get very skeptical when all views turn to predict just one thing and that's a doomsday scenario. And find that a saying by Warren Buffett, the smartest investor of our times is worth keeping in mind if not following. When everyone gets greedy, you should be fearful. And when everyone is fearful, it's time for you to be a little bit greedy or at least get out on a hunt. Welcome everyone to Truth versus Hype, Realty Debate on Property Prices Falling Because of Demonetization. Samir Jasuja, CEO of Prop Equity and the author of that 8 lakh crore rupees being wiped out of real estate is of course joining us today as is Gitambar Anand, CMD ATS Infrastructure Limited and President Kridai. Baman Irani, CMD Rustamji and Vice President MCHI Kridai also with us. Pankaj Kapoor, Founder and Managing Director Lysis Foros because it's always great to pitch two data guys and find out what the truth is in this truth versus hype debate on real estate. And Ramesh Nair, Chief Operating Officer, Business and International Director, JLL India who was very agitated and very upset when he came on NDTV Profit during market hours and says this is all bunkum. All right. Let's start with the report highlights first and tell our viewers what Samir Jasuja, the author of the report, has written in that report. 8 lakh crore to be wiped out, he says, exact amount, 8 lakh 2,874 crore expected to be wiped off in the next 6 to 12 months. Residential real estate valuations in top 42 cities. I wasn't even aware if there are so many cities, but I'm sure all state capitals have also been taken. We'll ask Samir. Sold and unsold will take a tumble and fall up to 30%. Maximum fall on total market valuation will be in Mumbai, 2 lakh crore rupees, followed by Bangalore, surprisingly, at 1 lakh crore, and Gurgaon at 79,000 crore. But that could be the size of the market. Gurgaon is one of the micro markets, of course. Indian Realty is now bracing for subprime level crisis. And this is actually a very worrying statement, which is expected to deeply impact the core unorganized real estate and black money. So all the organized real estate developers on the panel today have been let off right up front. We expect a lot of secondary market transactions coming down in volume. For every five buyers out there, there was only one buyer willing to pay in all checks. Samir Jasuja, first defend that 8 lakh crore market cap figure that you've come out with. How did you come out with those numbers? You see, the thing is, first of all, uh, these numbers are with respect to 42 cities. Mm -hmm. uh, if you take an average of 10 to 15 percent of 50 lakh crores, which is the market value mm -hmm. that we captured uh, over these 50 cities of 40 lakh properties, mm -hmm. odd, uh, this is the number that emerges if you take 10 to 15 percent as a, as, as a normal case scenario, which uh, first of all is a short term number that we are stating. We are saying that this is going to be a short term phenomena hmm. because people are going to back off in making property transactions, expecting property prices to fall. So you are saying 6 to 12 months, right? We are saying 6 mm -hmm. to 12 months. Okay. Of course, this is one of the best steps taken for the economy and for the real estate sector. I have been saying that and I have said that on that report and I have also said, which has not been taken by the media, <laughs> is that the stronger developers will benefit tremendously. Hmm. People who are larger developers, organized developers, who deal professionally and create transparency will benefit. The people who have taken a lot of debt and today that debt was getting helped uh, by them uh, from NBFCs. So, uh, they were getting money from NBFCs. Now NBFCs will also stop lending and their projects will go into a little bit of a toss. And who that will may take lead to debt? You mean developers? 
I mean, developers that are taking debt over okay. the last two years are getting okay. funded not by sales entirely, but NBS 30,000 crores by NBFCs has come into the system in the last two years. Mm -hmm. Now, with the current scenario, uh, and they are very dependent on this debt, I am not talking about all developers. We track 22,000 developers. We are mm -hmm. not talking about the developers who are financially strong or who have large commercial asset portfolios that are leased out. We are talking about small developers, mid sized developers that have heavy debt burdens, they will really get cash trapped and that will also lead to a situation on fallen prices. Mm. Keeping a couple of other factors in mind, mostly the fallen prices is going to happen at the luxury level on the secondary market. The land transactions, especially agricultural land, farmland, the under construction properties of developers uh, which are sold mostly by check in any case will not get that badly affected at all. Commercial real estate which is sold to okay. investors will get affected in a bad way. All right. So and he by the way, we did not even discuss <laughs> we did not even discuss the foreign commercial real estate values <laughs> in this number. Oh wow! So that adds up to even more. All but right, gentlemen, I'm leaving. I am lest I'm told that media takes sides. I am not going to take any sides today. I just want to really figure out what is this number which is believable. So Samir has qualified, but the number which was carried by media. Uh, we didn't carry it, but the number which was carried by media was, of course, the market cap which was eroded. So, Gidambar Anand, 8 lakh crore, do you think even if it falls by 10 to 15 percent over 42 cities, the number is worrying, scary, not believable, believable? So, <clears throat> these are reports which are based on certain assumptions. <clears throat> Straight away, 15 percent of what did you say, uh, 5 lakh crore, 15 50, 50, 50 lakh crore? 50 lakh crore. Why do you assume that 15% is black money? <clears throat> it's a big assumption. I don't mm. take it. Mm. Number two, you cannot make such a grand statement without mm. having facts in black and white, black and white. <clears throat> that okay. the market will fall, 8 lakh crores will be knocked off. I totally, totally uh, disagree with Samir. Mm. It is not true what he says, what his claim is. The assumption is wrong. Mm. Uh, the primary market will not fall. Okay. And he will agree with that. <clears throat> okay, mm -hmm. let's start here. Will you agree that the primary market will not fall, Samir? This has been one thing that the developers have said, maybe secondary. Let me finish why. Let me started. explain to you oh, why. Go ahead. You see, the primary market is always catering to the end user. Mm -hmm. And the end user, more often than not, takes a home loan. Mm -hmm. What was killing this primary market was the secondary market. Now, when we would launch a project, we would sell a certain proportion of stock to the investor. Mm -hmm. The investor mm -hmm. wouldn't stay for two years or three years. The minute after a year or maybe after an 18-month period when the investor saw that there was some money to be made, suppose we were selling at price X, he would sell his stock at X minus whatever mm -hmm. to the end user again. And okay. that was where all that cash was happening. Now what is going to happen is when that investor cannot exit over there because he gets only a full check payment, mm -hmm. that customer too will come back to us to okay. the primary real estate developer. And coupled with a low home loan interest regime, which mm. we all agree is going to happen sooner than later, mm. the culture in this market is going to be leverage, mm. give, put up that deposit of 10 to 15 percent, and go and buy that property with a good developer who you trust. Basically, there was a trust deficit. Everybody mm. was cry crying horse for the last two years. Property prices are going to crash and this and that. Mm. There was a correction in the last two years, 15 to 20 percent in some areas. And that is the bottom because there's nobody going to do an out-of-pocket. Hmm. Because of demonetization, the market falling by 30% and 8 lakh crores being eroded and being wiped out is totally unfounded. Hmm. It is based on an assumption. Hmm. So I, for industry, I do not uh, totally, I totally uh, okay. don't accept that claim. Okay, so it's based on certain assumptions because there is no real estate liquid market. I mean, like a stock exchange, which will tell you how much market cap has got wiped out. Baman Irani, come in here. We will, Samir will take all these questions and also answer. But let me get all panelists points of view. What do you think of this report? And where do you find believable observations and not so believable observations? So, Manisha, it's, it's how you read the report, right? I mean, 8 lakh crores could also mean that you have a lot of, uh, you know, the unorganized players going out of the market. Those people who were 
operating in various markets with you know the cash component etc etc i think in gitambar i speak we speak for the credit affiliated developers the organized part of uh, the business itself the organized part of the business i think for the last 7 8 years has got such great institutional backing in terms of uh, funding requirements business has changed the way it functions we've got funding now coming in at various stages whether it is land stage and there's equity funding then there's nbfc funding and then finally for construction there is you know the construction related funding that comes from the, uh, uh, the scheduled banks uh, when you look at this entire cycle i am very very optimistic that a the market will adjust to itself to say that either these smaller players will fall off by the wayside those that were engaging in all kinds of uh, activities will not be in the business anymore or b the development cycle itself is slow down if this report only screams what the headlines are and we you know we've got a bad habit of reading only the headlines if this report continues to scream only the headlines then what will happen is the de developers new launches will slow down all developers who have been uh, you know in the business now have already launched their projects have got uh, capitalization or well capitalized to be able to complete the projects itself i don't see any kind of a a problem as far as that is concerned having to drop prices under the uh, value that is you know in a way uh, expended to create the product is really a long term shot unless someone is really in dire need and you know maybe one of projects get the sacrificial lamb and to that extent whatever is the damage done but in the long term by screaming this reports uh, headlines i think we'll be doing disservice to the people because there'll be a slowdown in the new launches that take place the inefficiency we already know of the real estate sector while it is being changed in a huge way by the organized players still continues to be a, a major issue and prices might as a matter of fact due to this actually rise because the actual natural demand no one has said has gone away it still persists it still is there it's a, it's a, it's an industry documented figure that there are 8 crore homes that are shortfall and in that about 2 crore homes are in the in the cities in the metros or in the cities of uh, india so we should be a little uh, uh, what do you call go down deeper read this report and ask some some way to classify like he's already said organized uh, developers will actually stand to gain i think a little more light on that will help uh, the viewers a lot better okay fair enough <clears throat> pankaj your observation on uh, what would you agree i mean i think the biggest question i need to ask you is that most developers are countering this argument of any meltdown in primary market prices saying that look if the there is a price correction it will only be in secondary market which had a lot of cash component there will be no domino effect on primary market convince me either for it or against it you know uh, you can't say that there would not be any correction there would be a corrections but it will be segmented and different geographic driven hoga you can't really say that the correction will be across board in across all the segment i'll see in the luxury segment it will be the correction will be in the land and it will be in the plotted i do not see much of the correction coming in affordable and mid segment apart from that like you know i want to uh, draw a point of view on the report like you know 8 lakh crore rupees is coming out of what i am seeing that they have consider 2 uh, uh, lakhs units for mumbai so it is like you know unit launch in last 5 years which will undergo correction or there is a, all the households which are available so if you consider the number of household only in greater mumbai that itself stand close to 26 lakhs unit so it is not that that the 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 properties which has been launched in last 6 years or 7 years they are the one which are prone for corrections and if it if that is uh, then i see the premises of correct uh, you know assessment is also wrong there is one more side of it if you see we have uh, we sell close to 3 lakhs units across india in the primary market we have close to 5 lakh 50000 unit getting sold in the secondary and the independent houses so all together we are selling close to 8 lakh 50000 units uh, all india and if i take a uh, uh, value of the industry the size of the industry which is close to 6 lakh 50 6 lakh 20 20000 20, crores and which is actually 6% of our gdp and it's get correlated because real estate contribute to 5 to 6% of the gdp mm -hmm. so if you look at if my gdp size is 120 and 6 lakh 20000 rupees is the size of the industry so that means that 8 lakh crore means that i am doing a correction more than the size of the industry and other side is if i am doing a corrections on certain limited number of property that's also assessment uh, uh, wrong assessment so i do not agree to the point of view is that 8 lakh crore rupees has been uh, assessed correctly either it should be assessed from the point of view of what is going to be erosions in the value of the industry 
Apart from that, when we did the assessment, I see that in the land cost, I certainly see because that's what employs Why the maximum amount of money. Why in land and plotted development? Uh, Why in land and plotted development, Pankaj? Yeah. Yeah, you know, land and plotted development because that's where the maximum amount of cash gets employed. Okay. Luxury housing, that's where the maximum amount of uh, cash getting employed. And this, these two things contribute. So, you know, luxury housing, which is 4 crore plus properties in metros and 2 crores in the entire two cities and, and, and entire three cities, 1 crore plus property, they contribute only 23% So the size of this particular industry. So if the correction takes place there, and if I assess the corrections taking place to 10 to 15 percent or even 30 percent, the overall impact in the corrections by virtue of the size of the market does not increase more than 22 percent. But there's another side of it. If the correction takes place, that means it will bring the affordable, uh, you know, a lot of people into the affordable range and there would be a demand growth which will happen along with that. The, the, the okay, interest future. rate. Pankaj, let's stop here. We're only discussing six to 12 months right now. I think the numbers, but you've given your assessment. Ramesh Nair, your point of view on this report and the figures. Samir is a highly uh, respected uh, industry colleague and a good friend, but uh, I'd like to say here that uh, this uh, report is uh, totally uh, baseless. Uh, this is creating a lot of uh, panic and uh, confusion uh, in the market. See, uh, whatever little bit uh, I've been reading in the newspapers, uh, we are talking about uh, the government totally saving around uh, 4 lakh crores. That's 16 lakh crores of black money, uh, 12 lakh crores will uh, uh, come in, 4 lakh crores won't come, in, come out, uh, which means uh, the government will earn 4 lakh crores, it will come into everybody's Jandan account. So as per Samir's uh, report, if 8 lakh crores of value is being uh, wiped out, uh, is that what our Honourable Prime Minister has done, uh, making sure 8 lakh crores is uh, getting wiped out of the industry? This will be the biggest faux pas done by any political party ever in the world of wiping out 4, 8 lakh crores. As per this report, uh, values will fall 30% uh, uh, in many markets like Bombay, Delhi. Does that mean uh, the house in which uh, Samir currently uh, stays has just lost 30% uh, value? I am making an open offer uh, to Samir on this show to uh, sell his house uh, to me at 30% uh, uh, discount. I'll buy it uh, today. I'll uh, send a check across. I noticed one more line which says that uh, four to four out of five uh, home buyers uh, yes, in India pay uh, cash. Yeah. Four out of five uh, home buyers pay cash, which let's assume India has uh, 20 crore households out of 100 crore population, five people per uh, household. Does that mean 16 out of the 20 crore uh, households in the country have done illegal black money transactions? They should be put behind bars, all those 16 crore uh, people uh, representatives. So it makes a lot of sweeping uh, statements. Uh, we all uh, agree that this is going to increase a lot of cash in the system. So we have to agree that uh, interest rates will come down. If interest rates come down, the biggest beneficiary will be the real estate sector with cheaper loans. A uh, lot more money coming into the organized uh, financing sector. Again, real estate will be a, a beneficiary. Uh, Ramesh, please note no, that with RERA Ramesh, coming Samir in, supply is going... has said that organized sector will benefit. His report very clearly says that. His report also talks about the fact that the primary market with large developers will actually benefit. So, like Baman said, nobody went down below the report. So, my only question to Samir here is... and. I'm going to try and be a little bit more, um, you know, neutral. I am supposed to be neutral, so I will be doing that job. Samir, is that why bring up this 8 lakh number right at the beginning and up to 30%? Because media always has a habit of carrying the negative and sensational. And the way the report was written, it was the sensational was first and everything else was followed later. So that's my question. And then, of course, you can respond to point by point to what the other panelists have said. Uh, Manisha, first of all, why the number came up on top uh, is because we're a data and analytics company. Uh, we thrive on providing data points. And I think uh, that was the most important data point that we wanted to reflect uh, to everybody, right? So is that assumption flawed then? Because it came up on that assumption that 10 to 15 percent of and the total like. So It's an so allegation I like uh, Ramesh Vari right? Manisha, I don't know why we are making such a big deal out of this report. In the oh, stock oh, market, oh, I... Yeah. <laughs> Allow me to complete. When you look at the stock markets, many, many times 
over a period of one year, at least 10 to 20 times in a year, over 8 to 10 lakhs of value of shareholders gets eroded on a daily basis. And it 20 gets events happen. And it gets restored. And it gets restored. Right. We are talking about, first of all, a short term period here. Okay, got Second it. Second of Absolutely. all, we are talking about value of properties that have got launched and got completed from 2008, going up all the way to properties that are going to be completed till 2020. We have a very large market size of real estate and we know that. In anybody's right mind, yeah, the they are stacking up. They no. are stacking up. 2008 to 2020. Yes, okay. and there, is, there are 50 lakh properties we're talking about here. Okay. Right? And we can give you a count of every property and every project in that. Mm -hmm. Right? No, but the secondly, assumptions, Samir. Secondly, let's, let's, Let him finish. let's Let him finish. ask let's give him any a, yeah. logical Indian citizen today, all my esteemed panelists, any, when such a big event has happened in this country, I would say as big as something post-independence. Economic which, reform, I would which say. Which rightful I... investor or end user today will not want to wait and watch for 6 to 12 months to see what impact it will have on the market before he makes that decision to go and buy the property. So, ah. will that, right? so does that there mean is, this that is going to lead to, and that is why, exactly. The ah. question, my, no. point, my point of view is, first of all, People Maybe. are not going to transact as much as they were transacting for the next 6 to 12 months. Mm -hmm. They're going to be in a wait and watch period. Sure. You know, this report has just not come out of thin air. I have personally spoken to about 100 people from brokers to real estate private equity funds to developers to some of the top IPCs. I know of exact number of transactions which were going to be happening and people have pulled off last minute. People are asking for 20 to 30 percent discounts. Right? That's that's okay. the thing. No, what? But may I? May let's, I? May let's, I? Let's let's get real. Let's get real. Let's get real. May, may, I, may I? May I? Just this say is something. also this is also my estimation, mm. right? This estimation is coming out from a data analytics company based on the fact that these are X number of properties with such a big event happening. And are we saying a sector where maximum black money goes? Also, by all means, I would like to say this on national media. Most real estate investors, and I would say most here, buy real estate to park cash. Most of the time that happens from an investment community. I am not talking about from an in end use community, okay. right? And let's not deny that, right? We have maximum amount of black money going, whether it's the politicians, whether it's the bureaucrats, whether it's the industrialists who are buying property, a large component. Today, we're talking about agriculture land. 90% of the transaction is in cash, Manisha, 90%. Mm -hmm. A Chhatarpur farmhouse, which is for 40 crores an acre, is down to 12 crores an acre. Last transaction done in three days. What uh, my friend Ramesh said that I will send you a check of 30% for your apartment. Fortunately, I did an all check transaction. I live in a community which is an all check community and that's an apartment complex that is ready. Uh, I didn't say all properties will come down. I just said few types of properties will come down mostly. I'm still maintaining all under construction properties that are being sold by reputed developers will not get affected. I don't know why we have... Okay, so let's stop the, there. Let's stop there. We have now, great this is, developers this is on this question. panel and I'm on their side. No, I no, also so said people like no, Godrej and so Tata and ETS and DLF will benefit. Are we saying, are we saying, saying that there, is, there are in a, in, a, in, in a particular location, which is Golf Course Extension, where investors are sitting with black money in Magnolias or Aralias, and there will be some, Samir, where second sales no. have already happened. You're saying primary sales, you all bought in check. Secondary sales, if, if Magnolia's value has gone up from your buying price of 6 crores to 18 crores today, it has not gone up all in white. You agree with that? No, it, it has, has gone, gone up, up in white. It has gone up because of a lot of black. Oh, please. Please. It has gone up in white. I'm sorry to say there are certain... So tomorrow so there's a demand. Yeah. No, no, there is there no is conflict. There is no contradiction. Absolutely. Let me clarify this. Real estate today is being driven clearly by demand and supply. Right? Okay, Today, forget Magnolia. No, no, let's, let's, let's take that clearly. Let's exactly. look at any market. Let's look, look, at, any let's market. look at any market. Let's look at any market. Today, market. Today it has been driven by demand we, and supply. We all agree that from secondary sale onwards, uh, some amount of cash starts creeping in because that's the reason why the Prime Minister had to do demonetization because there was so much cash. And lots of, uh, I, I mean, you know, fund managers internationally used to look at India and say, why is there a bubble in Indian real estate? It must be because of the cash economy. Now, that is Manisha, not what we are going to do. just pick up registration records. I will 
bet by life on just it don't go just by one life. second no, sir no no, 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 no apartments i am talking about secondary or, market properties no, 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 let's, pick let's, up 15 so properties in any micro market housing. and you Somebody will find sir. the variation you know i picked up a lodha project i want to say this on record hmm. 200 registrations in an apartment complex and i can provide this to the to the media by the way on the same day there were three transactions with a variation of 40% why was that happening so let us not take into account that cash does not exist in the system in real estate. We are not let denying us that. Not any okay. micro market you pick up of okay. choice. Gentlemen, 50 yeah, properties right. pick up, you'll have a variation of 30% in those 50 properties in any because micro market. Because of the cash element. All Absolutely. Right. We now can't my basic that. question is, gentlemen, some parts of the market which are inflated because of black money come no, down. No, 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 Will no, it no, no, not no, have no, an no, effect no, on the rest no of the reasons for that. markets? Baman, come in here and then Gitambar as well. Bombay, by the way, is going to erode the most. As per, as per the report, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, one is just to answer. Sorry. So, can I just go ahead? Listen, first of all, Samir, just to bring to your attention, registration happens on a different day than when the actual uh, booking takes the place. Same days. Imagine I buying an apartment at the start days. of a, you know, building construction and registering it two years hence. I'm not yes, it's the same day. Registration taking place on the same... When sorry, booking sorry, happens just, in just Bombay... Let me just clarify because you know, audience su suddenly is very happy to hear headlines only, okay. which we've seen earlier also. You know, people have lost perspective of... Just, 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 just let me finish here. You know what's happening in India right now? 8 lakh crores, 14 lakh crores. People don't know how many zeros come after those, but everybody's very happy hearing all these big numbers. I just want to say this, that there are instances, and we should not kind of paint the entire industry with one brush. There are instances where people have booked an apartment on the day of the launch of a project, or on the pre-launch of a project, and they've got a very exclusive and special rate. Secondly, these people have then gone ahead and registered the property one and a half, two years hence. And there's a natural incline in prices, 15 to 20 percent year on year, because of the you know way the financial system works. Okay. My whole point is there is not going to be, and like maybe you've said in your report, and like you know people have just been screaming with with headlines, and they should dive deeper. I agree that inland transactions across the country there may be a, there may have been a whole host of things that were happening on the cash side, but you have to take it from me, and I speak. From, from you know uh, a responsible point of view that in the city of Mumbai even the even the transactions that uh, you know Pankaj spoke about uh, of, of being super exclusive they were taking place in check I'll give you instances where JLL themselves have taken these apartments and sold them in the market JLL like a company puts an ad in the paper calls for responses in Mumbai all land transactions have taken place through a through a, a bidding system electronic bidding system to you know verify the highest prices most of these have then gone to court and you know where where the final uh, decree has taken place so please let us understand that cash may exist in the hinterland or in the peripheral areas but in the larger cities where this report is screaming off or where people assume this report is screaming of 8 lakh crores being eroded it is not going to happen Please appreciate, you might actually slow down with all these reports coming. The new launches will get slowed down, which means that the inherent demand will continue growing. And at one point of time, there'll be the hockey stick recovery, which is what we saw in the earlier dip also. So we should be very responsible as media as to what we carry forth to our viewers. Okay, fair enough. And this is what I'm, I'm also a bit worried about. As it is with RERA, your new launches are going to come down. Also, because a lot of developers are seeing sales slow down, they're not willing to launch new projects, right? And overextend themselves, that's second point. And now this whole demonetization fear where at least the buyer is going to be on the sideline for a while before he takes the plunge again. Gitambar, tell me, I mean, what is likely to happen? When do you think, what will it take for the buyer to come back? Do you think like an interest rate of eight eight and a half percent half a percent slash is something which will get him back into the market what will restore the buyer confidence the buyer was back in the market mm -hmm. let me say that october was one of the best months for the buyers it as was, right? it was yeah mm -hmm. average pricing of housing i'm talking of mass housing from the organized sector across the countries between 4500 actually even 3500 to let's say 5500 if you're looking at a 30 percent correction you mean to say that prices will come down by 1,000 to 1,500 rupees per square foot? No, they won't, because input costs do not allow that. Projects have already been, you know, there's been financial closure, banks have put in debt, construction funding, and there is a, you know, there's, there's a bottom line, I mean, which we do need as a businessman, and nobody's going to compromise and grow an out-of-pocket product. Mm -hmm. What happens is, Manisha, when a report says that wait for 12 months, 
because prices will correct. People will wait. And prices don't correct. In fact, if prices rise, who will take the responsibility? Who will be responsible? This is what, Manisha, this is what happened in the last two years when everybody was shouting horse, prices will correct, prices, and we were saying, you know, prices have already bottomed out, go ahead and make that purchase. People started buying and whoever waited, you know, actually got a, it could, could be a 200 rupees per square foot extra. I'm talking about even our products in the NCR. I'm talking about good developers in Kadai across the country. People did increase, even 200 rupees per square foot increase, and it's an increase. Mm -hmm. And for an end user, that 200 rupees a square foot hurts. So why should we make irresponsible statements saying, I guarantee prices will fall in the next 12 months. So wait, I'm saying this, that you know, you tell them, be candid, go do your homework well, see your developer, and if you feel that prices will fall, don't buy. But okay. don't say this with such assurance. No blanket statements. I think Not the bottom line is no Not blanket statements. One, one second. Here? Can Sameer, I just say one thing here? Sameer, tell me one, one thing. One last thing. No I would one like has to answered say. that question to me. If you're saying part of the market is likely to fall down, which has a lot of fluff, which has maybe bad developers, which is unorganized or sitting with the investors. Around the ambit but, report but the also. Large Large investors, large developers will not see, primary market won't see. I am in my mind not being able to distinguish and get the answer. How will one part of the market fall, but the other part of the market won't fall? And Manisha, How is that going to happen, Samir? How do you justify? You and your report have said that large developers, primary market, all checks won't fall. But hey, here's a possibility that all of Mumbai will fall by an average of 20%. How are you distinguishing the markets? Everybody is distinguishing the market. And I want to know, how do you separate a market which is so intertwined between investors and end buyers? That is... The answer I'm looking for today, Samir. So Manisha, start with that. Yeah, I'd like to answer this and I'll answer it with a very sound judgment. Hmm. Okay, first of all, I have done this show with you for three years. Correct. You have been on this show with me for the last one year. I have been the person who's been saying this is the best time to buy. Yes. Have I been saying that or not? No, no, right? no. no. I just just one second, just okay. one second, right? Fair enough. Because we have continuously believed that the real estate prices have bottomed out because hmm. of for end users where prices had corrected 20 to 25 percent. Now what happens? There is a big event that has happened that has shaken all the markets. When you go to buy anything in the market today, sales of people have dropped from 40 to 60 percent. Because there's no cash in the market, Samir. To so buy even sir, a shirt, sir, there's sir, 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 Exactly my point of view. What I'm saying, That Manisha, cash also goes to the real estate no, sector. No, it doesn't. No, they're leveraged because yeah. they're doing a full <laughs> check <laughs> payment. They're not that getting 2,000 rupees a note to buy a property. Sir, you Let's are talking not, about a very small let, See, Abhaman was making a very pertinent point. Sir, are Let's you not, saying that real estate transactions only just a minute, check. just a minute. And when you buy shirts, you buy by cash. When you buy one sec, that's why that cash. is why people are not selling in the shops because people. The first concern of everybody is let me first go and change my money. My shirt can wait. Same with real estate, sir. No, no, no. Manisha, one sec. Manisha, more. let's not forget. Even more so, it's a lifetime Abhaman was decision. making a very pertinent point. The Ambit report. Remember the Ambit report, which said real estate prices will correct by fifty percent because the rental uh, return is not uh, is totally askew from the capital value. Did it fall by 50%? But that was 2015 where the black money wasn't taken No, no, out no, 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 but that was another report which had such a claim. So let's not go by these sir, reports. we are anyway saying it's a very short-term phenomena because... 12 of months short -term is not short-term, Sameer. Sir, Everybody with this kind of a big impact... After that, no. it doesn't happen, who goes back? Let's not be responsible. Let us, okay. let us advise the buyers candidly.